miracle in the house. It's got to work. When you leave today, when you go next week, encourage yourself. It's going to work. Hallelujah. This time it's going to work. Try it again. It's going to work. Hallelujah. It's got to work. If you believe, hallelujah, it's going to work. Hallelujah. In your favor. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand praise. If you believe that God turned in your favor. If you believe God Raise your level of expectation. Raise your level of expectation. 
hypocrisy. The devil wants you to walk around to the less than. But I come to tell you, you're more than. That's a plan from the enemy. Raise your level of expression. Rebuke that spirit of depression. You're above and not beneath. Uh, you're above, dog. You're above. Hey, I don't care what the enemy said about you, but God said you are the head and not the tail. God said you coming out. God said he's going to put your family back together. He's going to put it back together. But you got to believe what he's saying. God ain't speaking just for so. But you got to get it in your mind that God's going to do just what he said. If you believe that God's going to do just what he said, it infects your body. You will have a praise on your lips. Eh? Nobody ain't got to pump and prime you. Yeah. You'll be coming to the house of God with a praise. You know what this is about? It's just a matter of time. 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 Because it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time, brother. Yeah. Hey, yeah. The enemy attacks you. But guess what? God is with you. No weapon form against your shell prosper. No weapon form. We didn't fight this for so long. Hey, we got people, life on the line here. No weapon form. I believe. I believe. I still believe. I still believe. Regardless, but I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. You hit me with a left hook, but I still believe. Hit me with a right, but I still believe. I still believe. Hold on to that word. Don't let it go. That word is your salvation. That word is what's going to bring you out. Amen. The announcement for ladies, God.
Amen. Join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Sunday school. Amen. Um, 11 a.m. for our Sunday morning worship. Every Wednesday night is our midweek connection at 7 p.m. Okay, in the way of announcements, we have. Pastor Scott will be preaching at Lifestyles Deliverance Ministries, and that's in Wyndham, North Carolina, Sunday, March the 8th at 4 p.m. Pastor Scott is also preaching at Miracle Temple, Sunday, March the 15th at 4 p.m., and that's at Deep Wave Arena, 1209 Bridge Street. Pastor will also be preaching at Apostolic Deliverance Church of Christ, and that is Friday, March the 20th at 7.30, and that's in Kingston, North Carolina. Also on the way of announcements, Vision Banquet is Saturday, March the 21st at 4 p.m. Advanced pricing is $15 adults, $25 and up. 13 to 24, $10 advanced pricing until March the 20th. $20 at the door. Please see Sister Lewis for, to pay her for the tickets. Dress to embrace. Amen. Also, um, we would ask for all of us, I'm sorry, the college workshop is Saturday, March the 14th at 12 p.m. And our sign up sheet is in the back. You can see Sister Lucky for details. Amen. Amen. Also, everyone with the birthday for the month of March, will you please stand? March the 1st. Woo Happy birthday. Anniversary in the month of March. Okay. So happy birthday. Amen. 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 Building fun. And if by chance if you left the house and you didn't bring any cash, you're also able to contribute electronically through our cash app, which is dollar sign the way church 6600. Dollar sign the way church 6600. If you have your offering, I ask you to stand with your right hand in the Father. of blessing to it. Remember, if you haven't paid the pledge and if you're experiencing any type of difficulties, please see a member of the finance team. Right? Dear Lord God, my Heavenly Father, God, I say look upon the sea, bless the seed as well as the sword. Bless it like you bless the two fish and fives over blood. In the mighty mess the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. There's a song from the musicians and brother servant and about us.
loose at night. Why you have to walk in your clothes and walk the flow, not knowing why. I want you to understand that God is about to manifest. I gave you can somebody tell them it's bigger than what you think.
You are our fellow basis. We give you the glory, Father. We give you the glory. We stand before you today, Lord. Empty pictures before you filled fountains. We confess that we are nothing without you. We're not here today to boast in ourselves. We're not here today to be seen. But we're here today to give you the glory. I must confess that we have not been everything that we need to be. So we don't come to you boasting of our goodness, boasting of our righteousness. But we come thanking you for your grace. Applauding your mercy. For your mercies are renewed every morning. I thank you for this brand new mercy. Oh, yesterday I could have exhausted it, but you let me live to see a brand new mercy. And we glorify you. Sinners saved by grace. Grace is my portion. And we say thank you. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name. Come on, tell him thank you. Listen, I want you to grab your Bibles real quick. The pastor going to give you the word of the Lord. And I'm going to let you go home. Eat some pig feed and chicken and whatever, whatever you got. I need you to go to two passages of scripture. The book of Revelation, the second chapter, verses 1 through 5. And Isaiah 43, and verse 19. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Isaiah 43, and verse 19. What you have got me to do will signify by standing and saying amen. Y'all done worship, so we done, we done got the, the heart part over. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to break, break the water yes. for the child to come forth. Woo. You got to learn that when you come into God's house, you got to be pliable. Willing. To worship. Amen. So I just came to hear the word. I didn't come for all the singing and the crying and the shouting. Well, if you don't do that, you ain't going to get the word. That's right. Because God is working your heart so a word can get in there. He's creating an atmosphere so that you can receive something from God. When you have the scriptures, if you will signify by standing as is the custom of this house for the reading of God's word. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen to the book of Revelation, chapter 2. Amen. Verse 1. We honor, praise the Lord, our sister, pastor, and all of our elders, deacons, amen, ministers, our mothers in Zion, certainly to all of our visiting friends and family. This is your first time here at the Way Church. We salute you today. Thank you to our First Lady. We thank God for her today. <laughs> Revelation chapter 20, verse 1, you will find these words. And unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say of he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst bear them which are evil 
Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne and has had patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. Quickly to Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Today I want to take my subject from verse 5 of Revelation, the second chapter, and about the latter clause. And it says, Remember whence thou art fallen and repent. And then he says, Do the first works. I want to talk from the subject this afternoon back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> what do you do when you have been under so much attack that your focus is off. That your morale is low. And it seems like you have been under so much attack that you don't even have the energy to put one foot in front of the other. You say you love God. He's in your heart. Come on, say amen. But somehow, you're burnt out. Anybody ever experienced burnout? Anybody ever experienced church burnout? Now, folks don't talk about that because that don't sound spiritual. You know, it sounds, you know, like you've dealt. But too much of anything can burn you out. Come on, somebody. Physically, I'm here. Functionally, I'm here. But emotionally, I've checked out. Tell the man says it very well in the song, Take Me to the King. Truth is, I'm tired. Options are few. I'm all church stop. Because no matter what the problem is, go to church. Come on, somebody. Your bills are due. Go to church. Singing your Bible. Go to church. Your marriage is falling apart. Church. We're going to church. We don't even know how to do life. Yes, oh, gee, I'm glad y'all shouted. Yeah. <laughs> we do church very well, Rufus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shut up. <laughs> Come on, somebody. All right. yeah. And yet, you have checked out. Mm -hmm. And you are on autopilot. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and this is the funny thing. 2020 came in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you made your declaration. Mm -hmm. Next level glory. This is my year. 
I'm going all out. God's going to do this. And then we walk around the church and we name it, we claim it, we blab it, we grab it. But the truth of the matter is that even before you got started with 2020, you was already burnt out. Y'all don't like my talk. Because your last fight depleted you. Rather than saying, Lord, I need a refilling, you keep trying to shout over your empty place. Rather than deal with your brokenness, you try to act like I'm not broken. Rather than saying I'm hurt, you try to go over the hurt spot. One thing about it, if you don't deal with an open sore, it can get infected. It can fester and become putrid. After a while, you lose your arms and your legs and your fingers and your toes because there are some things that you needed to deal with, but you didn't deal with. Come on, somebody. Now, as we look at this scripture today, I'm going to be before you long. I'm, I'm really, I've been done about all God told me to do anyway. The church at Ephesus is one of the churches that the Apostle Paul established. Right. Amen. On his missionary journeys. In fact, if you read the book of Acts 20 and 28, when Paul is now leaving uh, 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 Ephesus, he is on his way to Rome. Praise the Lord. And he uh, encourages them. He tells the elders Amen. Praise the Lord to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. And, and be careful, he said, because after my departure shall many grievous wolves enter in, not sparing the flock. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and so he encourages them. And the elders, amen, the Bible says, fall on his neck and kiss him. And they weep because he says, I'm never going to see you again. It is this Ephesus, this a, a, a region of churches that Paul, praise the Lord, founded, amen, that the book of Revelation is written to. Now, what is happening here is John, amen, the apostle, and consequently the revelator, has been put on the Isle of Patmos for the, for the sake of the word of God. And the Lord Jesus, the resurrected Christ, is giving a message for the seven churches of Asia Minor. And he gives a message, amen, to each church, praise the Lord. And out of all seven, there was only one of them that he didn't find fault with. Amen. And he comes to Ephesus, amen, and he tells them something. He says, guys, I recognize your work ethic. You own it. Your works are good. Hallelujah. I also recognize, praise the Lord, that you have been producing while you've been under pressure. Yes. Anybody know about producing when yes. you're under pressure? Yes. How many say, say, say I, I, I know how you've been producing under pressure. And, and, and he says, but then I, I, there's been another level of trouble that's even been added to you. I understand that you have tried those that said that they were apostles. You tried those that said that they were supposed to be sanctified and they were leaders of the house. And you tried them and you found out that they were nothing but filthy liars. That, that they really didn't love God. Hey man, they were just fleecing the flock. They really didn't love God. Hey man, they were just playing games. He says, and so I know those that you have Amen. Saw that they were apostles and you found. And listen, you ain't never been hurt till you've been hurt by somebody that you thought was really saved and you found out that they really wasn't saved. Y'all don't like my talk up in here. Amen. Praise the Lord. You ain't been hurt, praise the Lord, till you've been hurt by somebody that you thought was going to help you, but they hurt you in the process. And so the Bible says, praise the Lord, that, that I understand your works and I understand your patience. He says, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And I understand how you have been under persecution lately, and yet you're still producing while you've been under pressure. Hallelujah. And so I'm giving you your praise and your kudos for everything that you've done. He said, but I have something against you. Yeah. Now, it don't matter who loves you. If Jesus got something against you, you need to stop. Y'all quiet. Your mama can say you're all right. 
But if Jesus says, I got something against you, you need to stop and examine yourself. Y'all quiet up in here. Hallelujah. And, and this is the truth about every one of us that have a relationship with the Lord. Every one of us got that check engine light in us. Oh, I'm preaching already. The oil ain't act like you don't know that you need an oil change. The oil ain't act like you don't know that you need a tune up in the spirit. Y'all quiet up in here. Amen. You don't know when, when you get the second hand cause you're always used to, amen, some light being on in you. Amen. You found out how to get it to pass inspection. You, amen. Shit, they say. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you disconnect the battery cable so the thing resets and you drive it long enough so that it resets so that when they put it on the computer, and the light is still off because it hadn't caught up to the problem. But see, the thing about it is sometimes you can disconnect the light, but you still haven't dealt with the problem that caused the light to turn on. And it's only a matter of time. You might get by the inspector, but the light won't come back on again. And you still got to deal with the problem. So you still drive to West Virginia. You still, praise the Lord, going down to Florida. Hallelujah on something that is broken now and you don't know at any given time when you need to go somewhere this thing might shut down on you and, and, and that's how we do our spiritual life we know that our spiritual check engine light is on hallelujah but because we are accustomed to doing church so well amen we shout over the check engine light we dance like everything is all right and somebody asks us is everything okay and you say praise the lord i'm blessed and highly favored but your check engine light you know, and you know. Oh, I want to preach to some real people. Have you ever been in a low place before? And you get in a spot where it doesn't matter what you think about me. No more. It doesn't matter whether you think I'm spiritual or not. I'm in a low place and I need God to bring me out. I got a problem with you. Yeah, you did good work. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you fed the homie. Yeah, you got a good clothes pantry, and food pantry. And yeah, you're, you're social activists in the church. And you wear so many hats. And, and you're the deacon. And, and, and you're the Sunday school teacher. And, and, and you're just the chairman of the fried chicken board. And come on, somebody. Glory to God. And, 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 and you're the coupon clipping committee. And you do all of this stuff. And you're so busy with being busy. Hallelujah. That you have learned how to operate on autopilot. And the problem is, hallelujah, you begin to treat God's stuff, hallelujah, black as autopilot. And because the church is so undiscerning, and because as long as you can function, Chris, as long as you can hit them keys, and as long as you can hit them notes, uh, you, you, got, you must be good, you must be okay. And here you are serving in a, a department in the church, and you are drowning, losing your mind. And all I care about is if you're going to show up and if you're going to function. You, you, you almost blew your brains out before you got to church this morning. But all we want to know, can you show up and can you function, praise the Lord? Uh, because we're just worried about the way things look. And we're not concerned about how it really is. There's a lot of folks that are dead in their grave because they've been worried about how it looks. They will cover up a lie because they care about how it looks and not how it is. And Jesus said, I've been sitting up in heaven and I've been sitting your worship, and I've been hearing you preach, and I've been hearing you praise me, hallelujah, but I got something against you, because I'm not just concerned about what you do, but I'm concerned about how you do it. I'm not just concerned that you're able to sing, but I'm concerned about do you really love me when you say I love the Lord? Do you really have joy when you get out there dancing and shout? Do you really have peace of mind? Trials of life have a tendency to strip the passion right out of us. Come on, somebody. And all we do is function. 
So some men, we could be hurt and broken. But because we are by nature workers, we function. We suffer in silence and we function. Now sisters are different. A sister will tell you that she hurts. A sister will tell you, she will have a conversation with you and tell you you're getting on her nerves. Two women can fuss and have it out. And don't like each other, don't like the hairstyle, don't like the clothes. And, and, and then later they hanging out and acting like you know, drinking coffee and acting like everything is alright. You know, men will suffer silently. We don't want to talk about our feelings. We don't want to get in touch with our emotional side. Because somehow we've been told that as a man, you're not supposed to cry. You're not supposed to deal with your emotional side. But that's why your cheese is almost about to slide off your cracker, praise God. Because you won't tell nobody that you hurt me. And you won't tell nobody that you're in a broken place. And you won't tell nobody that the devil is about to make you lose your mind because you feel less masculine. And that's why the enemy is trying to, amen, end your life. I mean, the sicknesses that you are dealing with down in your body is a result of the stress that is going on on the inside of you because you won't tell it to God and you just know how to operate. Beloved, I want you to understand, hallelujah, that God never intended for us to just operate. God intended for us to feel what we do. God has never intended that we just come to church and sing, pray the Lord just to sing, but he wants to know that when you do it, you're feeling it. And see, these folks have been through so much trouble and so much turmoil, hallelujah, that they have lost their first love. They had lost their passion. They had lost their fire. And they were just functioning. And I'm telling you, I don't want to be with nobody that ain't got no passion for me. I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. I don't want I don't want to be with you if you ain't got no passion. I love Lady T, but if she act like she ain't got no passion for me, I don't. If I, if I reach over there to run my hands through her hair and she act like she don't want me to touch her, that's it. They done got pride now, Lord. See, folk can, folk, folk, folk can fake the funk. And, and, and if you are spiritually sensitive, you will not be fooled for, by somebody that lost passion for you. All right. All right. All right. I can walk in the house and in five minutes, I can immediately know if something is wrong. Right. It ain't what she said. Yeah. It's what she didn't say. Who uh -huh. I'm preaching all the way. No passion. Usually, if I put my hands on your shoulder, you just melt. I put my hands on your shoulder. Now you you you, you didn't draw back, but it's like uh. right. you know. Bible says men were created in the image of God. So, if you want to know how God feels about some things. Ask a man about how you feel about things. Oh yeah, I lost my crown. God is a jealous God. The word says, my name is jealous. A real man got some jealousy in him. If he loved you, sisters, he's got some jealousy. I didn't say he was crazy. But there's some jealous. I, I ain't say that he gonna put his hand on the car and see how hot the, and go to calculate the mileage to make sure that where you said you went was like, now that's crazy. But a man created in God and he's jealous. He's jealous for your attention. Oh, they quiet, quiet. He's jealous for your attention. And if everything else gets your attention but him, he may let it slide for a little while, but after a while, you're going to hear some stuff. A man is jealous of anything and anybody. I'm telling y'all some secrets. All these dudes that walk in, I'm not jealous. I'm this evolved new man. You better check him. 
A man is jealous of his mother over his mother-in-law. If she's around all the time. Y'all quiet. A man is jealous. Pray the Lord over your boss. If your boss go to call him to the house too many times. I'm just be honest to tell y'all like it is. In the church, people feeling good. They're always coming. You smile and shake your hand all the time. It doesn't matter how much tongues deep spoke in. If, if he come to you about two more times, on the ride home, there's going to be a question. Why are you always in your face all the time? Because it's not just that I showed up to church today. 
It's not just that I'm doing good church stuff, but it's how I'm doing what I'm doing. So the Lord speaks to them and he says, I understand the struggle. And, and, and I applaud the good stuff you do. But I have something against you. And what I have against you is that you have lost your first love. You have lost your feeling toward me. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you don't sing sweetly like you used to. When you used to sing Amazing Grace, the tears would roll down your face. And, and then all somebody would have to do is say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. And, and, and then all of a sudden, your heart would begin to flutter because you were in love with Jesus. Praise the Lord. We didn't have a man, an uh, uh, orchestra. We didn't have a band. And, and the drum that we had was really already busted. Y'all don't like my talk. Hallelujah to God. And, and and the piano was out of tune if we had one at all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But it didn't take much. We didn't have an air conditioned church. We didn't have wall to wall carpeting. And the seats that you sat on, praise the Lord, were wooden. If you slid across it, you get a splinter in your behind or a nail would tear. Hallelujah. Your suit. Y'all don't like my talk. But when I got in God's house, I just couldn't wait to get in there because I wanted to be in his presence and I wanted to be where my brothers and sisters are. And now we got a band and an orchestra and we got a praise team and we got dancers and we still have to ask you to get up off of your seat and give God the glory. And we still got to impress you with lights, bells, and whistles so that you will give God the praise. When the scripture declared that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises will continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. The Bible declares enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. But the problem is my brothers and sisters you come to church on empty. Oh yeah. Anybody ever came to church on empty? You can be honest. You come to church on empty, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The cares of life and the things that you have struggled with all during the week have gotten your attention. And you can count on your hands how many times you cracked your Bible open and how many times you got down on your knees and prayed. And if you got down on your knees and prayed, you fell asleep, amen, half of the time you were down there. And so praise our God. Hallelujah. You come to church on empty. And you're waiting for somebody to say something that's going to give you the joy. And you're waiting for that moment that's a good place for you to step in. And if the preacher don't preach the suit, hallelujah. And if the music don't hit your right note, hallelujah, you can't give God the glory. And you leave the church talking about, well, we just didn't have a good time today. The Spirit of God wasn't in there. Baby, I want to serve those on your spirit of God always is in the house of prayer. Hallelujah. God is always here. The problem is he showed up, but you didn't show up. Hallelujah. Your mind was somewhere else. You were thinking about the bill that you had to work on. You were thinking about your relationship that was all jacked up. And so it got your mind, it got your will and your emotion. And Jesus said, I got something against you. How dare you come up in my house, breathing my air, the air that I gave, eating the food that I gave you the ability to buy. Hallelujah, come up in my house and act like I ain't even been good to you. Hallelujah. The praise leader say, lift your hands and you sit there like I'm not on the law. Come on, I don't have to do that if I don't want to do it. Hallelujah, when God said, I bought you with a price. I bought you with my blood. Do you realize that you're on your way to hell? Do you realize, hallelujah, that you were just a ways from death? And God, with his good self, came in and saved and delivered you just in time. Do you remember when they was about to put you out the door? But God made a way 
for you to have somewhere to lay your head. Yeah. Or I must be preaching to the wrong yeah. church today. Yeah. Y'all must have been rich and bougie all your life. Yeah. But the devil is a lie. I remember. Yeah. Hallelujah. When I didn't have two brown pennies to rub together. Yeah. Hallelujah. But the Lord kept me safe. Yeah. Come on and say yes, Lord. Yeah. I remember before I even knew the Lord. Yeah. Like I know him now. Yeah. But he still brought me out of situations. Yeah. He still laid his hands on me. Yeah. He was still good to me. Yeah, yeah there are some of you yeah, that if the devil would have had his way, yeah, you would be behind bars today. Yeah, you would be six feet under. Yeah, you would be in Holly Hill somewhere, yeah, banging your head against the wall. Yeah, but the good Lord with his good self yeah, stepped out of eternity in the time yeah, and said, I choose to bless you yeah, in spite of your faults, yeah, in spite of your failures. Yeah,
keep trying to give something to God. And let me tell you something, God is picky. Yes. I don't care. Some people say, well, as long as it comes from your heart, it can come from your heart. And if it ain't what it wants, he don't accept it. That's right. So I love that line. As long as it comes from your heart, it's what it, no, 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 no. It, it, it's not just your heart. Because if your heart is in it, you're going to seek out what he wants and give him what he wants. Not what you want him to have. Yeah. I got something against you. You don't love me. Yes. What are you used to? You don't hold my hand no more. You don't sit on the phone and listen to my breath. If I remember that? You sleep? No. What do you think about? Good. Y'all must have never been in love before. My wife lived long distance. My grandma and yellow long distance on her phone. So I used to use the calling card. With about $25 calling card. And something like 120 minutes on it. And talk every last one of them down to the last minute. Beep, you have one minute left. <laughs> And soon as that thing goes, I, I hang up on it and go to the store and go buy another. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you in love, you got the bag. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, you, when you got in love, when, when you in love, it don't, you, don't, you do things that don't make sense no more. Yes, you gonna do things. When you, when you love somebody, you gonna do things with them, praise God, that everybody else says, child, I just wouldn't go, because you don't love. Love don't, love don't make sense. You know what? And, and see, we can accuse God of being foolishly in love because why do we love us? And we jacked up. And he bring you out so many times. Two more times. I, I wonder what good thing I must be to God. You know, man. You jacked up like me. We both jacked up. And that's why I... That's the, that's the word. What is man? That thou art mindful of him, of the son of man. Come on, somebody. That's your business. Why, why does he keep bringing me out? And, 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 and I get in a situation, and I pray. I say, well, Lord, if you bring me out of this thing, I ain't going to do this no more. And I promise you, Lord. And, and you go to promising God and praying and crying. And, it's not, and you really mean it. Glory to God. And then God, with his good self, come in and bring you out. And after a few days, you get to feeling good again. And then you go right back in the same thing that you said you wasn't going to. And he come back, and he bring you out. Oh, can I preach to some real folk up in here? Some folk that done been through the mill. And sometimes you do so stupid, you ashamed to go to God and pray. You ashamed, Lord, I know it's me again. I'm jacked up again. You know, do you know God knows you can't do like him? Well, I'm preaching better than I said amen. Do you know that God knows that you don't have the ability to keep the covenant like he can? Amen. He gets in covenant with you knowing you're going to break the covenant. Yes. And yet, he puts the strength of the covenant on his ability to perform and not on your ability. Salvation is not based on your ability to be good. It's on the ability of his blood to save you. And so some of us, we live and we go to church and we're taught this, this work performance that if I just do good enough, then I'm going to go to heaven. We teach ourselves and, we, and we've been taught, hallelujah, that, that you know, nobody really knows whether you're saved or not. But if I do just enough good, if I, if I, if I just please the Lord, just enough, just strive. And then, then after a while, maybe one day God gonna let me into the heaven. And if you believe in that kind of stuff, you believe in a lie because that's not true salvation. Salvation is not based upon how well you do because you jack up anyway. That's the reason why God accepted, hallelujah, uh, Abel's sacrifice over Cain. Cain was a sacrifice based upon his work. And Abel was a sacrifice based upon the blood. In other words, something had to die in my place. I was jacked up, but the blood is what covered me. And 
and it was the blood that saved me, and it was the blood that the who am I preaching to in this day? The only reason why you're still here and you're still standing is because the blood covered you. It ain't because you have been right all the time. Yeah, you got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you've been down in Jesus' name and you spoke that tongue, but you still jacked up. After you've done all that good stuff, uh-huh. you got to be pumped up to operate. Right, right. You you more locked up into your neighbor than you are to God. Uh-huh. If your neighbor ain't praising yeah. the Lord, you ain't praising the Lord. Uh-huh. If your friend if your friend ain't gonna shout with Leon, then I ain't gonna shout with Leon. Oh, y'all don't like my talk of me. Praise is not based upon how I feel about you. Praise is how I feel about God. Sometimes we got it all jacked up. I, I'm going to hold back on you because Troy, I don't like how you be. So since I don't like how you be, it don't matter how much you praise the Lord, I'm going to sit there like. Until Rod get up, I like Rod. So I said, I like Rod. All Rod ain't got nothing to do with you be all right. I got to do with you. So, so, so now so now my praise becomes predicated on how I feel about my friends rather than who my God is you see if you come to church and stop worrying about people and start getting your mind on God you'll always have a praise yeah, if you come to church and stop worrying So I'm sitting there missing my blessing. Because yeah. there's some blessings that ain't going to come to you open your mouth and give them the praise. Yeah. Yeah, but you ain't even going to get the Holy Ghost till you open your mouth and give God the praise. So, some of them, I ain't, I've been, been seeing you know I ain't got a hook because you won't give them no praise. Yes. You will open up your mouth. You just look, you just look, you just look like a, a knot on the law. You got to get out of yourself. Man. You got to stop coming to church looking so GQ sometimes. You got to come and say, you know what? I'm a, I got my tennis shoes on today. Hallelujah. I can praise God. I came in here today with my jeans on. I'm going to roll on this floor. I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to give God the prayer. I ain't worried. I come in my hair, standing on my head. I didn't come for you no way. I come to get an encounter with God. Lord, I have to bring this to a close. So he says, Lord Jesus, tell me that. He says, he says, I got something against you because you've left your first love. He says, and what you've got to do, he says, you've got to go back. And you've got to do your first work over again. There's three things he tells us to do. Hallelujah. For those of you that are taking notes, I want you to get this and I'm almost done. He says, remember. He says, repent. And he says, redo. He says, remember, repent, and redo. Say it with me, remember, remember. Repent, repent, and redo. And redo. You got to remember. You got to remember from where you fell from. Yes. You got to remember, hallelujah. See, so, so this is not talking to somebody that has never known God. This is talking to somebody that has known God and have found yourself in a spiritual slump. He said, you got to remember where you came from. You got to remember where I brought you from. You got to remember how good I've been to you. So remember, hallelujah, from whence you're fallen. Remember, see, see, what I want you to understand is the devil is strategic, Rufus. Why is he strategic? Because, praise the Lord, when you are working on something and you're about to get into a breakthrough, that's when he hits you. And he hits you to make you lose your focus so you'll stop working on what God gave you to work on and you'll start worrying about the hell that he's causing in your life. And the only way, hallelujah, to get back in the favor what you need to do, you've got to remember what you was working on hallelujah before he hit you if you really want to get the victory over the devil go back to working on what you was working on before he hit you praise God because obviously what you were working on was staring him up to the fact that he wanted to knock you off of your game he was making him kind of nervous you know he was making him kind of nervous praise the Lord he was working on it praise the Lord and so he said well praise the Lord you you getting a little bit too close to your breakthrough you're getting a little bit close to your power hallelujah so I'm going to hit you right there. I'm going to 
me. Hit you. Go ahead. Am I know what I'm talking about? Because somebody say, glory to God, remember. Remember. You got to remember, praise God. And then, and then, and then, and then, and after you remember, you got to repent. Somebody say, repent. repent. Now, repent is not when you cry. of heart and a change of mind. Some of us equate repentance with emotion. And you can have, you can come to church, you can get in the emotion, you can feel good, you can shake, you can roll, you can do all of that and get up and go right back to do the same thing you were doing. And you're in the same place because you have not moved forward. But when I repent, I change my mind. And I say, you know what? I'm not going to do this no more. I live. I know that God has greater for me. And because God has greater for me, I refuse to continue to sit here. Amen. Wasting away and doing that. I'm going to change. Yes. Yes. Come on, say amen. Yes. I, I change my heart. I change my mind. Yes, Lord, I'm sorry that I got distracted with the cares of life and the pool of ministry. Lord, change my mind and renew my passion in you. I need to repent. Every once in a while, beloved, I know you saved. I know you sanctified. I know you got the law. But every once in a while, you need to repent. Every once in a while, you need to get down and tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry and I'm wrong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every once in a while, you need to change the way you do things. Sometimes you don't even need to go home the same way you go home all the time. Sometimes you need to find another route. You need to change. Look at somebody say, change. You do your house better than that. When spring come in, you change the soul. But to come in, the carpet turned upside down. And this is up because you get tired of looking at the same thing the same way. God said, you got to repent. Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh -huh. hmm? Amen. Remember? Repent. <laughs> Go back yes, and redo it. You know that when you did this, wasn't no love in. Right. You know when you did this, wasn't no joy in. Wasn't no, you was just doing it so that everybody could just be satisfied that you did something. You got to go back and redo it all over again. You got to go back and do your first work again. Does that mean you got to go back to the altar and say, Jesus, 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 speak something? No, 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 no. What that means is you got to change your mind. You got to change the way you have been doing something. And you got to get to a place. I'm preaching to somebody here. Yeah. You got to get your fight back. Yes, sir. You got to get your focus back. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You got to get your fire back. Yeah. You got to get your fight. You got to get your focus. You got to get your fire back. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Your fight is your ability to go through no matter what's going on. Yeah. Your focus is your vision. You got to get your vision back. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Gloria, and you got to get your passion back. How passionate are you about serving God? I'm done. How passionate are you about serving God? Remember. Repent. Renew. Everyone stand. It's time to go back to the I even thought about when we were on Buffalo Road when we stayed there for 10 years with no growth. And because I was afraid to change as opportunities to grow and to go forward. But when God dealt with me, I had to change some stuff. And 
just a few changes, we had to move out the building. Because God began to add. I guess my question to you is, you say you want the power and the favor of God. But what are you willing to change in order to get what you need from God? If you ain't willing to change nothing, then just quit. Because nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Until you change. This is a new season. We're getting ready to walk. Or we're actually walking the next level of glory. One thing I want to settle in your heart and in your mind right now. So you don't think you're crazy. You're going to get attacked. Okay? Can I just tell you the truth? So, so you won't be surprised. You're going to get attacked. You're going to be fought. Because you have destiny after your life. Satan is coming after you. That's a promise that you count on. I can tell you about a house, a house or a car yet, but you can, you can, you can bet on it. He's coming after you. Young people, he's coming after you. You're going to get fought. Being fought does not mean that you're not in that level glory. Being fought does not mean that God has left you. Being fought is a sign that hell is near. Yes. Because God's hand is on your life. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Leave no one in touch. I guess pastors comes in a place today where I'm really not interested in tickling your emotions. I'm interested in igniting you to operate in the next level. You can't say, I'm walking the next level of glory, but you're operating like the last time. You let your feelings and your emotions carry you. You're getting ready to sabotage a good relationship because you're treating this one like what the last one done. The Holy Ghost said, this is not bad. Y'all don't like my talk. You're about to mess up because you can't get out of yourself enough to realize that God's hand is on your destiny. Squeeze that hand. I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. We're holding hands because we want to connect together. But I want you to take a moment and I want you to search your heart. This is not a message for nobody else. If I've been preaching this message and all the while you've been thinking about somebody else and need to hear it, you missed it. This was a message for everybody. From the preachers on down. Examine yourself. Lord, is there anywhere in my heart that I've been on autopilot? That I've just been doing it? without thinking, without feeling. Is there anything in me that I need to redo? I don't know. Ask the Holy Spirit to just begin to search your heart now. Search me. Search me. Search me. Search me. The only way you're going to get new wine you must be transformed into a new wine stream. God is doing a new thing. And in order for you to experience the new thing, you have to be ready. Come on, talk to him. Search me, Lord. Every area in me that is not elastic enough to hold 
you to hold God, to hold destiny. Father, we ask for forgiveness today for losing focus in the middle of the fight, for doubting your goodness when we were in a strange place. For we recognize you never left us. You never forsook us. You never was against us. And as we stand in this place on the auspices of your glory, asking the Holy Spirit to bring to light every way in us that's not like you. Every way in us that doesn't give you the glory. Every thought, every attitude, every feeling, Hallelujah. It hinders us from walking into this next level of glory. We remove it today. In the name of Jesus, we shut down every thought, every imagination that comes against the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus, God, we speak healing and deliverance to the broken heart. In the name of Jesus, Father, we speak and minister help to those who have been hurt through the battle. In the name of Jesus, you have come to recover the sight to the blind. You have come to put together the heart that has been broken. God, we say thank you. Renew our mind. Rekindle our power. Renew our joy. Renew the love that we have for you. In the name of Jesus, Give them a fight back. In the name of Jesus. Give them a fight back. Come on, somebody. Give them a fight back, Lord. Give them my joy back. Give them my peace back. Give them my dance back. Give them the glory. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Have your way today. Thank you. 
went. And the place where they said it was going to be a deficit, it's about to be an increase and an overflow. Y'all ain't ready, y'all ain't ready. I'm telling you that where you got to know, God is about to give you a yes. Be glad that you didn't give up in this season. You're about to be glad that you didn't throw in the towel in this season. Everything that the devil has been doing has been to get you to give up. Everything that he's been doing has been giving you to turn your back on your promise. But look at somebody say, I refuse to turn my back on my promise. Just one day. 
God. You get ready to walk into some multi-million dollar project. You get ready to get some things come in your hand that you've never had them before in your life. Hallelujah, and you're a little bit nervous. Hallelujah, because you've never been there before. But God says, I'm getting ready to take you into locations that you've never been before. You're getting ready to experience things that you've never experienced before. I heard all of those say, get ready. I heard all of those say, get ready, get ready, get ready. God is getting ready to take you where you've never been. You're on your own business, wait a minute. Hallelujah. Millions. Yes, sir. Millions. Millions. I don't know. I don't know what you do, but millions. 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 Millions of contracts. Millions. Are coming in. Did you hear what I say? Millions are coming in your fire. Millions are coming in your possession. You're getting ready to walk in a level that you ain't never walked in before. And you're about to understand why the devil was fighting you to give it up and to quit, praise the Lord, and to go back to doing things like you used to do it. But you better hear the word of the Lord today. You will never, you can never go back to the way it used to be. You can, Tommy, you came in to the church on that little small cinder block place on 8924 Buffalo Road. And I know you didn't know what to expect when you got there. But I'm telling you, you can never go back to the same again. The truth of the matter is the devil was afraid of you. And he's trying to kill you so you don't get to see exactly what God has called you to be. But I'm telling you, you're going to have what God showed you. I'm done. I'm quit. I'm quit. I'm quit. I'm quit. I don't know why. Friday the Lord showed me. And I was gonna put it on the inbox. And I just decided not to do it. No, it ain't ready for it yet. God said there's about to be a wealth explosion. Yes, sir. They didn't hear it, Lord. Yes, sir. There's about to be a wealth explosion. Yes, I said there's about did you hear me? I said there's about to be a wealth explosion. Yes, just so you can go look fly and get your hair done, but no, he wants you to funnel it into the kingdom. Yeah. There, there, there's about to be a wealth. That, did you hear what I said? Hallelujah. The, the money is out there. You're getting ready to go get it. Yeah. Who am I speaking to today? Yeah. I don't preach for your soul. Yeah. Man, I need to talk to you about where you're going. It, it's time. Come. It's time for you to stop living a mediocre life. It's time to walk where you never walked before. And if you're going to have what you've never had, you've got to be willing to do what you've never done before. And yes, you're going to get fucked. And yes, it's going to hurt. And yes, they're going to misunderstand you. And yes, your family going to push you to the side. But i got a question for you today. How bad do you want it? Yeah. How bad do you want it?
possibly going to be well known, glory to God. Hallelujah, not in North, just in North Carolina, but up and down the East Coast, God is about to make you, glory to God, interstate, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, so get ready, sir. Get ready, sir. Get ready. I don't know what it is you got to do that you've been contemplating on doing, but the Lord says stop. It ain't dipping your toe in the water. He said, step all the way in. He said, because the, it's not going to open up until you step all the way in. You got to step all the way in. I don't, I don't even know why I'm still here this long. I'm supposed to have been sat down a long time ago. But you got to step all the way in. God said, I'm going to prove myself to you. I'm going to prove myself. about to give you some multi hallelujah million dollar projects some companies are coming to you it's good you know because in the beginning you got to do what you got to do you know fill your calendar and your clients with you know Joe Smoke Mop Street that's, that's fine but the Holy Spirit says leave room for these three big projects leave room for three big projects in other words, don't be so busy trying to handle everything small that you have no room for the big things that he's going to send you. Because there are going to be three big projects that's coming your way that's going to take you higher than you ever been. In other words, I don't know if you have people working under you, how you got this thing, how you got it set up. But the Lord says, designate them to do some of those projects. Leave some room for some big projects. Because if there's somebody that's thinking about you right now, they got you kind of like on the hook right now. You're like, you gonna do this? What you, you gonna, they're coming, glory to God. They're coming, watch what I feel. Yes. Holy yes. God. Listen, listen, I feel the election right now. I feel led to take an offering. I need, hallelujah. Brothers, we come stand right quick. I know we don't raise the coffee. Y'all got to go home. Put a blow in the sandwich with y'all. <laughs> you got to use your cash out. Come quickly. I want you to sow into this atmosphere. I want you to come sow into the atmosphere. Who's got the pain? Come quickly. Come quickly. If a business owner, you need to be the first. If you're thinking about it, so if you're thinking about going into the business, you need to sow into this atmosphere. It's giving that's going to do it. It's going to release it. You've got to know, God's got to know whether he can trust you with what he's going to give you. Because, see, he's not even just giving it to you just so that you can look good. He's giving it to you so that the kingdom can be benefited. Come quickly. Come soon. God is unlocking some things. Chanel, God is unlocking some things. Did you hear what I said? God is unlocking. Have you already chose your spot yet? Okay, so you need to get serious about that. You need to go look at the spot where you want to be at. When you find the spot that you want to be at, make your mark and say, Lord, this is where I want to be. 
When you say that, then God will set some things in motion to make it happen. Amen. Let everybody. Let everybody. You using Cash App? I need you to come touch, touch the pan with your phone. Quickly, 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 quickly. This is a season we ain't gonna do like we used to do. God has called us to higher and greater. God has called us to higher. And greater. Marcus, I don't know why I see this, but I see a a financial breakthrough miracle coming in your life. I see a shift and a job change for you. Get ready. Get ready. And, and the Lord says, stop, up, sir. The Lord says, stop letting uh, opportunities pass you by. Okay? He says, there's been several opportunities I sent you away, but because you were unsure of yourself, you let them pass by. He says, I'm sending you another opportunity. He said, I want you to jump on it because this is going to take you from point A to point B. He wants you to live like you've never lived before. Hear that, somebody? Hear that, somebody? What people don't understand about a prophetic word, God will give you a warning. God will give you a word. You got to obey it. You got to work what God, what you heard. If you don't work it, don't blame it on God. The only way it didn't happen, you know, if you didn't work it. If you don't obey God. Did you hear what I'm telling you? You got to work what he gives you. You got to work. And, and, and let me say this. To get what you've never had, you got to be willing to do what you've never done. You have to get to a place. And I want you to hear me real good because this is specifically for you. You have to get to a place where you are comfortable with not controlling the outcome of everything. You got to get to the place where you let God get in the driver's seat and do what he said he's going to do. And you got to follow him irregardless of where you know where he's going to take you. You got to trust it. And until you get to that place, you're going to be stuck. And God has greater. God didn't save you to be stuck. God saved you for you to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It is time now to step out and do what the Lord said to you. That's his word for you today. I promise you. I'm quitting. Elder, you ready to take this mic? Before I lose my whole crowd, they're going to leave me. Everyone stand. I got a cool mic. Tell somebody back to the drawing board. Yeah, there's some things you got to go back and do. How you doing, Brother Tate? Yeah, this message spoke to you today. You got to go back to the drawing board. There's some other things you got to do because God is requiring more. In fact, the truth of the matter is, there is a, uh, how can I say it? Lineage. I keep hearing the word lineage. There's a prophetic anointing on your lineage that you have to answer that call. You see things a lot of times that other people in your category don't really see, it, but you see it because you have a spiritual eye. The enemy has kept you unfocused long enough, but God says, strengthen your gauge, redirect your focus. Hallelujah, he said, because I'm getting ready to use you to do more than what you've ever expected in your life. Look down through your family. His hands is all on your family, all of your children, your wife. Greater is coming in your direction. Hallelujah. Do you trust God? You tr do you trust God? Do you trust this word that I'm giving you? Listen to what I'm telling you. It's between you and I. I ain't telling you business. I'm going to talk in code. It's going to happen quicker than what you think. It's going to happen quicker than what you think and than what they say. Get ready. Go. He's going to do it. If he don't do it, come back and tell him I'm alive. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your word. Lord, we'll never be the same again. We trust you. 
We take you at your word. And we are blessed today. Dismiss us from this building, but not from your presence. Go with each and every one of us as we travel over the highway and the byway. Cover us under your blood. Bring us back together again, and we'll give your name the glory. And I am praise shall be thine in Jesus' name we pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule in the body, henceforth, now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.